Hello, my name is John Chitalia, and I'm the CAD Interface Manager at Comsol. I'm going to introduce you to the LiveLink for Inventor interface. For this demonstration, we will be examining a pacemaker electrode. We will look at how the geometry affects the total resistive power lost in the area surrounding the electrode. We will want to measure the resistive heating in watts as we change the geometry. We can then use LiveLink to adjust the dimension parameters and graph the calculated resistive heat. In order to use the LiveLink interface, we have to start up Comsol and have at the same time running the CAD program, which in this case is Inventor. The first thing we do is to load a CAD file, and in this case we're going to load the pacemaker electrode file, where we have a, a voltage source and a ground on an electrode. We then switch over to Comsol and we start a new project and the very first thing it asks us is to select the dimension and for the LiveLink interface we use a 3D interface. In this case we will be using the electric current physics interface. And the very first thing it asks us to do is to set up the geometry. We right click and tell it we would like to have a LiveLink for inventor geometry. And as soon as we click synchronize it transfers the data across and we get an exact copy of the CAD model as it looks at an inventor. When we perform a synchronize with LiveLink, there's different options we can choose from. The very first one is to select the length unit. We can choose to use the default unit as it exists in console, or choose to use the source unit in the CAD document. We can then also choose which objects get imported, the solids, the surfaces, or the curves and points. Finally, we can set a tolerance, check the imported objects for errors, and then choose whether to automatically repair them or not. LiveLink is a bi-directional interface. We can select parameters to update in the CAD model uh, to which to update the CAD and to send it over to Comsol. To know which parameters to change, we can go to Manage in Inventor, select Parameters, and there we see the automatically generated model parameters and then the user-generated user parameters. In the user parameters, we see the radius is defined as 0.5 millimeters. Go back to Comsol, enter radius here, and then change it to 1.1, click Synchronize, and here we see that the top electrode node has been changed, both in Inventor and in Comsol. Now suppose we want to change a model parameter, but we don't know which one to change. We can simply edit the sketch and choose the one we want. Now because we want to change the location of the ground, we double click on that parameter and here we see that the dimension is D14. We e exit the sketch, go back to console and enter D14 here and change its value from 5 to 10. As soon as we click Synchronize, the CAD model is updated in both Comsol and in Inventor. Now that I've shown you the Synchronize feature and how to use the parameters to update the CAD model, let me show you how to use it with a parametric sweep. I'm going to open up a new project which continues on from this model. This is a project that uses the same CAD model, but we've added all the other aspects of the project, including a global de definition of a parameter. We've added definitions of what we would like to calculate from here, including the uh, resistive heat. And then we want to do an integration on that to do the total resistive heat. We've added a cylinder to the ge geometry, so even though only one is the live link, we can still add extra geometry to it. We've added materials, the electric current values, including the initial value at the very top of the electrode, and the ground values. And then we've set up the parametric sweep right here already. And in this one, we've set up three values We've updated, let me open this fully, and we can see we're changing 
position parameter, which we've defined as a global variable, and gave it three possible parameter values, 8, 10, and 12. And then we've set up two 3D plots and a 1D plot to see the resistive values along those three values. There, there you see the plot for the 8, 10, and 12, and the various resistive values. And here, in the derived value node, we can see the exact values that were calculated. Now, let me expand on this by changing parametric sweep values to not just be three discrete values, but let's set up a range. Let's do a range from 6 to 12 at increments of 0.25. And then, because we've already set everything up and the live link maintains its associativity, all we have to do is rerun the parametric sweep. And what we will notice is that although we had already calculated it for various values, it will start over and it will be updating the CAD model as it goes along. Now that the parametric sweep has been completed, we can see that the CAD model in Inventor has been updated with the last value of that range. Let's switch over to console and it automatically switches to the surface plot. We want to see the updated global plot so we can see now it has the full range of values from 6 to 12 and all of the resistive heat values. Now the plot that we see here only has a single value on it, not a range, but we can switch over to the parametric sweep value because we had actually stored that in a new solution. So if we switch to that new solution, we can now choose from the various parametric values. It, it shows the last value that was calculated at 12, but we can go back to 6.25, replot it, and there we see the surface plot for that value. In the slice plot, we can tell it to use solution 2 as well, and from there we can choose its parameter values as well. Replot it, and now we see the values at that specific parameter value. And at any time we want to see the actual values that were calculated of the resistive heat, we can simply go up to the parametric sweep node, and, and in there we see the, all the calculated values for each of the positions. Thank you for watching this demonstration. For further information, please visit our website at www.comsol.com.